as children improve their cognitive skills, they're also developing self-concepts, ways of interacting with others, and attitude towards the world. In this lecture, we will review social, moral, and emotional development. Understanding personal and social development is critical to your ability to motivate, teach, and successfully interact with students at various ages. Cognitive development, personal development, and social development are often described in terms of stages. We speak of terrible twos, not the terrible ones or the terrible threes. When someone is reacting in an unreasonable, selfish way, we accuse that person of behaving like a two-year-old. The words adolescent and teenager are associated in Western culture with rebelliousness and identity crisis hero worship, and sexual awakening. These associations reflect stages of the development that everyone goes through. In tracing the course of social development, some theorists have considered how the challenges of society and culture change as an individual matures. Following this path, Psychoanalyst Eric Erickson developed one of the more comprehensive theories of social development. Eric Erickson proposed eight stages of psychosocial development, each dominated by a particular psychological crisis precipitated through interaction with the social environment. Of these, four occur during childhood. Psychosocial development involves changes in our interactions and understanding of one another, as well as our own knowledge and understanding of ourselves as members of society. Erickson suggests that passage through each of the stages necessitates the resolution of a crisis or conflict. Accordingly, Erickson's theory describes the basic issues that people confront as they go through life. However, his theory has been criticized because it does not explain how or why individuals progress from one stage to another and also because it is difficult to confirm through research. In stage one, trust versus mistrust. The goal is to develop a sense of trust through interaction with caretakers. In stage two, autonomy versus doubt. That's about 18 months to three years of age when children have a dual desire to hold on and to let go. In stage three, imitative versus guilt, which is about three to six years of age. Children elaborate their sense of self through exploration of the environment. Children enter school during stage four, industry versus inferiority, which is about six to 12 years of age when academic success or failure is central. In stage five, identity versus role confusion. This is between about 12 to 18 years of age. Adolescents turn increasingly to their peer group and begin their searches for partners and careers. Adulthood brings stage six, intimacy versus isolation. Then stage seven, generativity versus self-absorption. And stage eight, integrity versus despair. Erickson represents each stage as a pairing of the most positive and most negative aspects of the crisis of that period.
Although each crisis is never resolved entirely, life becomes increasingly complicated as we grow older. It has to be resolved sufficiently to equip us to deal with the demands made during the following stage of development. Now, let us review some viewpoints in moral development. So, society could not function without rules that tell people how to communicate with one another, how to avoid hurting others, and how to get along in life generally. If you are around children much, you may have noticed that they are often rigid about rules. Things are either right or wrong. There is no in between. If you think back to your own life in middle school or high school perhaps, you may recall being shocked to find that people sometimes break rules on purpose and that rules that apply to some people may not apply to others. These experiences probably changed your concept of rules. Your idea of laws may have also changed when you learned People meet and debate and vote. The laws that are made one year can be changed the next year, how they are made. The more complexity you can see, the more you find exits. Just as children differ from adults in cognitive and personal development, they also differ in their moral reasoning. We first will look at two stages of moral reasoning described by Piaget, and then we will discuss related theories developed by Kohlberg. Piaget proposed that there is a relationship between cognitive stages of development and the ability to reason about moral issues. Piaget suggested that children around the world proceeded through a series of four stages in a fixed order. His stages included the sensory motor stage, approximately from birth to two years of age, the preoccupational stage from two to seven years old, the concrete operational stage from seven to 12 years of age, and the formal operational stage from about 12 years old throughout adulthood. As with these cognitive abilities, Piaget proposed that moral development progresses in predictable stages. In this case, from a very egocentric type of moral reasoning to one that reflects a system of justice based on cooperation, he suggests that as people develop their cognitive abilities, their understanding of moral problems also become more sophisticated. Young children are more rigid in their views of right and wrong than older children and adults tend to be. Now, let us review Kohlberg's stages of moral development. Kohlberg's stage theory of moral reasoning is an elaboration and refinement of Piaget's. So like Piaget, Kohlberg studied how children and adults reason about rules that govern their behavior in certain situations. Kohlberg believed that moral dilemmas can be used to advance a child's level of moral reasoning, but only one stage at a time. He theorized that the way in which children progress from one stage to the next is by interacting with others whose reasoning is one or, at most, two stages above their own. Kohlberg stages one and two is the pre-conventional level. Children obey rules set down by others while maximizing self-interest. In stages three and four, the conventional level, the individual adopts rules, believes in law and order, and seeks the approval of others. In stage five and six, 
the post-conventional level, people define their own values in terms of abstract ethical principles they have chosen to follow. So how do children develop socially and emotionally? Well, socio-emotional development in early childhood can be described in terms of Erickson's psychosocial stage. Peer relationships help children overcome the egocentricism that Erickson described as characteristics of the pre-operational thinking. Pro-social behavior includes caring, sharing, comforting, and cooperating. Parton identified four stages of play, solidarity, parallel, associative, and cooperative that reflect increasing levels of social interaction and sophistication. Play hones children's linguistic, cognitive, social, and creative skills. In middle childhood, children may be seen as resolving the psychosocial crisis that Erickson described as industry versus inferiority. Schools become a major influence on development, a place where the child develops a public self, builds social skills, and establishes self-esteem on the basis of academic and non-academic competencies. In pre-adolescence between ages 9 and 12, conformity in peer relations, mixed sex peer groupings, and challenges to adult authority becomes more important. Adolescents may be seen as resolving Erickson's psychosocial crisis of identity versus role confusion. They pay attention to how other people view them, search the past, experiment with rules, act on feelings and beliefs, and gradually seek greater autonomy and intimacy from peer relationships. Foreclosure occurs when the individual chooses a role prematurely, but by late adolescence, most individuals have developed a state of identity achievement. Most adolescents experience emotional conflicts at some point. This is hardly surprising. They are going through rapid and dramatic changes in their body image, expected roles, and peer relationships. The transitions from elementary to middle school or from junior high school to high school can be quite stressful. For most adolescents, emotional distress is temporary and is successfully handled. But for some, the stresses lead to delinquency, drug abuse, or suicide attempts. Emotional health is also a key factor in academic success. Emotional problems related to the physical, cognitive and social development of upper elementary school age children are common. Though pre-adolescents are generally happy and optimistic, they also have many fears, such as fear of not being accepted into peer groups, not having a best friend, being punished by their parents, having their parents get divorced, or not doing well in school. Other emotions of this age group include anger, fear of being unable to control it, guilt, frustration, and jealousy. Pre-adolescents need help in realizing that these common emotions and fears are a natural part of growing up. Adults must let them talk about these emotions and fears, even if they seem unrealistic to an adult. Anger is a common emotion at this age and is displayed with more intensity than any other emotion. 
adolescence can be a time of great risk for many because teenagers are now able to, for the first time, engage in behaviors or make decisions that have long-term negative consequences. Some of these include emotional disorders, bullying, drug and alcohol abuse, delinquency, risk of pregnancy, risk of sexually transmitted diseases, and sexual identity. Teachers can help students progress in moral reasoning by weaving discussions of justice and moral issues into lessons, particularly in response to events that occur in the classroom on a broader societal level. Well, as a prospective teacher, you are responsible not just for the academic achievement of your children, you also strive to develop young people who are socially and emotionally healthy.